Hello and welcome to my third edition of This Week in Gaming, a lighthearted look at all the latest happenings in the industry. A No Man's Sky player has built Sean Murray's face on the surface of a planet. He used black and white panels, a pixelated reference photo, and hours of his apparently limitless free time. When giving directions on Twitter, he said, here's the coordinates from my position standing on Sean's beard. Sorry, Sean. Like, <laughs> I would love to see Sean get mad about that. You dare defile my tribute. <laughs> but what if a creature wanders onto his face and poops on it? Like, that can happen. You, if you feed an animal, it will poop. Let's just move on. The Daily Mirror has come under fire this week for their front page headline, Fortnite made me a suicidal drug addict. Now, most people don't take tabloids seriously, especially one that suggested the world would end last Friday or that the aliens built a sphinx on Mars or that has a whole section on their site just for boob-related content. But oversimplifying suicide is dangerous and even more irresponsible than spreading the word about high-heeled crocs, which <sighs> if we don't talk about it, maybe they'll go away. Eurogamer's former YouTube producer Chris Bratt posted a series of tweets on Tuesday about the writer for the story, Matthew Barbour, who apparently has a history of paying people to say horrible things about video games. Chris posted a 2016 email from Matthew where he offered about 100 bucks to anyone that would describe how Pokemon Go ruined their life. For 100 bucks, I'll describe how Snorlax robbed me at gunpoint. Chris, the Eurogamer guy, actually wrote Matthew back with the most ridiculous tale he could manage, saying that Pokemon Go ruined his marriage, his wife is now looking for diglets with the guys at work, and the betrayal hung in the air like a Pokeball that had been thrown just as the service crashed. Matthew called him back and said though he figured parts of the story had been embellished, he'd print it anyway, and he even suggested some new lies that could make the story more shocking. Regarding the recent Fortnite story, Eurogamer posted an email from Matthew where he was urgently offering 300 pounds to anyone that would talk about their child's Fortnite addiction. He said, we need this to be as strong as possible. That's almost $400. For $400, my own mother would sell me out. For $400, I'll build you a fort at night. When Eurogamer reached out to him to verify some facts in his story, he said, am I being paid to answer this? Are you being paid to tell the truth? Clearly not. A space battle in EVE Online cost over $100,000 in damages this week when the Imperium faction attacked the Northern Coalition. But how can real money be lost in a fake world? Think of it like a currency exchange, where they take your real dollars and turn it into virtual money, which will then be changed into real regret. 56 Titan-class ships were destroyed, each one of them worth over four years of game time if you sold it instead of lost it. You see, one Titan-class ship costs about 80 billion isk, and you can trade plex for isk. One plex costs 3 million isk, 500 plex costs 20 dollars, therefore, one Titan-class ship costs about 900 dollars. Of course, 30 days of game time cost 15 dollars, but you can buy plex in a 2860 package for 100 dollars. 500 plex equals 30 days game time, or about 1.5 billion isk. If that's too many numbers, EVE is not your game. The point is that by destroying digital items, you get nothing and can waste more time and money than you ever thought possible. Elon Musk is putting video games in cars. He'll be integrating the steering wheel into the Atari game pole position, but assures us it will be stationary. You know, while gaming from the comfort of my home is great, I'd much rather spend that time in a parked car. That's why I love traffic so much. Someone asked Pokemon Go for Tesla, to which he said, Something like that, but more of an adults in cars anime vibe. Yeah, that seems safe. In World of Warcraft, Blizzard sparked some fiery controversy this week with the Warbringer Sylvanas animated short, the old soldier cinematic, and all of the pre patch content for week two of War of the Thorns. So I'm going to get into all that. Spoiler alert if you don't want to hear about it. Okay, so when I first saw the Sylvanas Warbringers short, I had prepared myself. I knew that it wasn't going to be as good as Jaina's because nothing will ever be as good as that ever again. So I set the bar real low. And when I watched it, I grieve for you. I was still disappointed. But not because this was dishonorable or a war crime, but because it didn't feel like there was narrative grounding for this to feel understandable or genuine. And it felt like Blizzard kind of crapping on the horde again. 
that's why you see all these morally gray memes in the comments. Because at BlizzCon, Ian, the game director, said that Azeroth has never been black and white. It's always gray. Well, this is about as gray as a Naru's butt. Then I did the quests uh, surrounding this event, and I started to see the bigger picture in context. So right before it plays, Sourfang sends you on a mission to save civilians, and he says, I will not kill innocents. Then when you finish, he says, we fought with honor today. That whole interaction exists to show the contrast between these leaders and to remind you of the true values of the Horde. Next thing, Sourfang chooses to save Malfurion's life, kind of going against an order from Sylvanas to bring his head to Darnus's. Sourfang had attacked Malfurion from behind, and he said that that was dishonorable and he didn't deserve the kill. So he tells Tyrande and Malfurion to just get out of here, get somewhere safe because we're about to sack the city, and he saved their lives. I can't stand Malfurion or Tyrande, and I thought... Could have gotten rid of one of them, but anyway, the Warbringer short plays. Then you fight some dryads after that say you follow a mad woman. Okay, all of this is here. All this is here as context to make you feel this specific way. You know, the backlash was intended and it's supposed to make you question Sylvanas's war chief. I also did the quest on my Alliance Druid and it was one of the most horrific things that I've seen in WoW. And I did the quest called Do the Right Thing in Hillsbrad Foothills where... Zombies planted humans in the dirt with only their heads open. And sometimes those zombies would eat their heads out of the ground like a carrot. And you are given a shovel and you're supposed to bash their heads in and blood flies everywhere. Like, I did that quest. And this was, I think, a stronger memory. A more a more compelling memory. Because it, was, it wasn't a joke. Like, there was no joking around about it. Like, maybe that other quest in Hillsbrad, it was, like, excessively, excessively gory. But this was, like, I remember landing in front of the temple, and I heard a woman screaming, I can't leave without my baby. I can't leave without my baby. And I was just like, oh, my God, that, like, hit me in the feels. And then you see civilians running around just panicking some of them are like I can't breathe I can't breathe and it's like I will never forget that today I watched the old soldier cinematic and I teared up a little bit during it I'm not I'm not ashamed to admit that Sourfang's look in the beginning is like oh hell no show him pushing zappy boys like you need to back the uh, and beloved hero of the horde and recent 110 boost zappy boy showed up and had some incredible cgi troll cgi which we need so much more of and it was so refreshing and he saved the day and uh, it was like a cool cool breeze on a hot day like really hot like blistering scorching now, I have so much to say about Sylvanas. I know it seems like I kind of glossed over her, but I have a lot to say, and I'm going to have to actually put it in a separate video that I'm going to release uh, around the same time as this. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this week's episode, please let me know in the comments and consider supporting it on either Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support the channel for free by clicking that subscribe button or by sharing this video with your friends. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.